All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is Monday, the 13th of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. And man's foolishness just continues to amaze me. Of course, uh, recently, the, uh, the, they're still in the process of commissioning or, or uh, testing, putting into operation the James Webb. The James Webb sounds like a... Uh, isn't that the guy that did the FBI series? <laughs> Space Telescope! Well, why? It seems to me that the Hubble had basically run out of useful things to do. Useful things to look at. Interesting, by the way, if you ever... Now, you can go online and look at uh, the images that the Hubble took. The real images that they took, not the definitely photoshopped uh, NASA publication images, <laughs> which are thoroughly worked over. Yeah, I know. I looked at them. I, I've looked at some of the the actual images. I mean, they're they're bad. I mean, the uh, sense the damage on the sensors from cosmic rays and other things. It's just they're they're really not very good images. Uh, as far as uh, uh, technical quality of the image itself uh, compared to, say, ones I can take with my little telescope. <laughs> I, I would never put up with that crap. But, I mean, they're, they're for scientific purposes, but you just don't, you know, NASA has a publicity department. Maybe it's run by Disney, I don't know. Well, maybe the next space station thing will be rainbow-colored. <laughs> okay, but see, there's NASA. It's like NATO. NATO had to find a new reason to be after the collapse of the Soviet Empire. It was supposed to be a defensive alliance to prevent the Soviets from overrunning uh, Western Europe, which I doubt the Soviets had any desire to do. But uh, you have to have an exterior demon to motivate the people, you know. An enemy, an enemy outside to distract from the enemies within, in the government, the enemies in the government within, the corruption of the government, the evil of the government, the failures of the government. And, uh, oh, come to think of that, I, I just I mentioned the other day how much of a, 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 a poo-slinging fast the campaigns are in Illinois for governor and whatever. The Republicans throwing dung at the other Republicans or pseudo-Republicans, or whatever. Uh, yeah, there's some question about whether many of these people are actually Republicans. <laughs> no, I'm not going to update my brother's software right now. Excuse me. Uh, but uh, there was, I saw, an, uh, there's one younger woman uh, running for Congress as a Democrat, has run, ran an ad the other day. And unlike the, the, the mudsling fest of, of everybody else, um, She's simply promising to restore, to rebuild the middle class. Is that in the power of government? Did the government build the middle class? I mean, the government can, re can build a building, can rebuild a building, could maybe rebuild a town. But can it rebuild the middle class? Did it create it? Th this is an uh, example of Overreach. This is an example of the deification of government. To think that government is all powerful. And it's not just the, the Democrats that believe that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can manipulate fiat currency, but 
Uh, yeah, I, you'd think that the current situation in Iraq or uh, Ukraine would be uh, uh, an education in the limitations of, of American power. It ought to be. That would be a good thing. Uh, but <clears throat> it was somewhat refreshing to see an ad that, that was basically uh, promising to do something good, but it's beyond the reach of government to do such things. You cannot build what you didn't rebuild, what you did not build to start with, really. You're not, it's not, you don't have the capacity to do it. But we live in an age of totalitarianism. The government is all powerful, whether they want whether they, or they'll take all power, but they can't do it. And the age of science, the age of scientism, where it's, you know, sociology this is, and psychology, this has contributed to the idea that government can solve moral problems. It, the purpose of government is to restrain evil to punish the wicked and reward good, that according to the scripture. So it, it has a role, but you cannot, it has got to abide within God's purposes. All things that don't abide in the purposes of God will fail. Our society is an example of that. Manifold. What area is our society not an ab abject failure in today? Because it will not abide in God's purposes. And one of those purposes is science, or one of those fields is science, and not abiding within the proper limits of science. Uh, and when science becomes a religion, and a bulwark against the knowledge of God is not serving God's purpose. It, it, the old scientists, including up into the, well into the 19th century, where you had people like Maxwell and Faraday and, of course, uh, Newton and others, they, they believed in God. They believed in a creator. They did not, uh, even Einstein uh, uh, believed in God. He was not an atheist. And he rejected some of quantum mechanics and said, God doesn't play dice with the universe. Well, God knows how quantum mechanics actually work. See, Schrodinger's cat is the, is the imagination of a wicked atheist. See, Schrodinger's cat is basically uh, the idea that, uh, oh, well, let me put a more simple example that's not so weird as Schrodinger's cat. But... Uh, uh, have you ever heard, I remember asking, having heard this question, I think in sixth grade in school, the teacher asked this question. If a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? Well, he was arguing that it doesn't because to make a sound means it has to be heard. Now, see, that's, see, that's, is, is it, now this is back how far back was this? This was back in the 60s. Oh, probably about 68-ish, somewhere around there. And the mentality was already present. The existentialist, nihilist mentality in America already was dominating the educational institutes, apparently. Because this person, well, they, these, these, I, we had, first time we had men teachers, sixth grade, fifth and sixth grade, and I, we had two of them. They're both fairly recent graduates. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe out of college of four or five years, perhaps. And th they were the, sort of with it, you know. I think one of them could play a guitar. Uh, but the, uh, the, uh, the, to, to the idea in that philosophical question, if a tree falls, falls in a forest, does, does it make a sound? Uh, it's sort of the idea that sound to exist has to be heard. And that go, that Schrodinger's cat is basically something similar, except it takes it to, to a, an, a different level. Schrodinger's cat, I believe it was, if you put a cat, a cat is put in a box with poison. 
the 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 cat is neither dead nor alive until somebody opens the box and observes it to be dead or alive and then the observation the observer is the cause that makes real the cat's death or the cat's life really see the Schrodinger's cat sort of weird uh, the, the, it's related to the Heisenberg principle of uncertainty, which has to do with quantum mechanics and and the idea that you can you can measure the velocity of a particle or measure the location of the particle, but you can't do both. And the idea that the very observation of the thing affects the thing being observed. But this, this is an absurd, Schrodinger's cat and the tree falling in the forest is an absurd extension of it and it gets into the religion of scientism and humanism and the deification of man. See, the problem is, it, it, it's, it's in, in the subjectivity of all things and the 150 genders. See, this is the outcome. This is the outcome of existentialism, which is basically a post-World War II phenomena as far as broad... Uh, actually, uh, the United States imported a bunch of uh, German philosophers, corrupt atheist philosophers, and they began to teach in the United States. Existentialism. Uh, I don't think it... I think they were fleeing from the Nazis. <laughs> Even the Nazis wouldn't believe in this nonsense. But the, the idea is utter subjectivism and that the your observation of the thing makes it real. Your hearing the sound of the tree falling makes it real. It's only reality is in the observer. Do you get that? Maybe not. It's really hard to understand what they're saying. And of course, as a non-nut in sixth grade, un unregenerate, but still, you know, knowing that God exists, I think, wait a minute. Of course the tree makes a sound. It's part of physical reality. But see, to, to argue that it doesn't make a sound is to argue against physical creation reality itself, that there is an objective reality out there. Of course, I think the goal of the teachers were to confuse us rather than to teach us. Uh, but yeah, of course it makes a sound. And Schrodinger's cat, the, the idea is the subjectivism that underlies that, that this, this kind of stuff comes from out of Germany, uh, you know, like pre-World War II Germany. <clears throat> that, and, and this is where people, these, these people fail to, to relate, to distinguish between objective reality and subjectivism because they don't believe it. They don't have a God other than themselves. So that's why they believe the tree doesn't actually make a sound if you, unless I hear it. That, that's empiricism taken to the ultimate, uh, which was a... Uh, back at the time of the American Revolution, there was one uh, relatively uh, common sense, whoever wrote common sense, uh, said, miracles can't exist because I've never seen one. Well, there's all kinds of rare things that I've never seen, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. Reality does not exist because I see it. It re exists because it's there. Thomas Paine, moral idiot. Subjectivism, the, the argument against the, uh, the miracles of Jesus not happening because Thomas Paine never saw a resurrection or never saw a withered arm instantly restored. Well, they're miracles. By definition, unusual attesting signs to the power and authority of, of a, a divine being. If they were everyday occurrences, they wouldn't be miracles. 
which is a problem with the charismatic movement, by the way. They call everything a miracle. If everything is a miracle, nothing's a miracle. So, but this, this is this is an absolutely absurd argument, but it is the epitome of self-centeredness. The idea that I am the center of the universe, I am God, and unless I see it, it doesn't exist. But that's the whole thing about Schrodinger's cat. But it's the idea that see these phys atom subatomic physicists or whatever taking the idea of subjectiv uh, subjectivity uh, to an extreme and and thinking well the the reality occurs when I observe it, but not before I observe it. So the cat doesn't die in the box on scene uh, because it eats the poison or doesn't live because it doesn't eat the poison. But its death or life are only determined and only happen when I see it. That's Schrodinger's cat, if I remember it properly. Do you really want to go with that? So that, that now think about this culture today. This has permeated our culture. When people believe that they, they deny what they see in the mirror, their, their biological sexuality has nothing to do with reality. It's only what they believe about themselves. This is absurd. See, there's, th this is an absurd, impossible worldview where I am the, the center. It's only what I create in my mind. So, I mean, how, how can you say that, say, that, that person that killed those, those kids down in Texas and those two teachers, how can you say what he did was wrong? Maybe it was, it was probably right in his mind. Who are you to impose your values on him? That's where it leads. Utter subjectivity. Cultures. I mean, there's, there's many, many cultures. Most cultures in history have practiced slavery. Some cultures have practiced cannibalism. Who are you to say they are wrong? See, that's the problem. And today, the person that's argued in our culture, in, in academia, who are you to, to judge other cultures? Well, the, I took a course in philosophical ethics, University of Wisconsin, at least the, the local extension campus. And, and uh, I, it was a running feud with the professor. Of course, he wasn't much older than me, so you know, I, wasn't, I wasn't intimidated. I'd already been through military and all that stuff. I'm not intimidated by these people. I'd work for a living, too, at General Motors. You know, real work. Not behind a desk somewhere. Not sitting in an educational building. Thinking about what I can do uh, or what nonsense I can teach. When you don't even believe in reality, what are you doing teaching anything? <laughs> That's absurd. The idea of an existentialist being an instructor is an absurdity. Why is he trying to propagate his world? <sighs> Evangelist for his own religion is what it is. That, that I'm God and you have to believe what I say. Uh, but that's that's the absurdity and it's bearing bitter fruit. So you, there, there's no... You know, why, why the moral outrage about uh, Uvalde, about the shooting in Texas? Why? Why? On what basis? You have no foundation. There's no God. Nothing matters. That's what they say, not what I say. That's absurd. <sighs> So, uh, I, this was actually going to be about the James Webb space toy. The, the uh, NASA employment program. But you can't. Without God, you have no moral basis for anything. You cannot say murder is wrong. It's just a, a societal construct. Just like gender is just a societal construct. See, these people are all functionally atheists because they do not believe that the God of the Bible exists or even the God of the Quran. 
Not that the Quran speaks extensively about these things. Ten Commandments aren't even in the Quran. Uh, although Moses is acknowledged. Oh, let's see. I was looking at YouTube still uh, processing Monday ramblings here. I guess I'm rambling more. But, it, I mean, that Schrodinger's cat it demonstrates that the imbecility, no, the foolishness, the fool. Schrodinger the fool was a fool. Still is. <laughs> because the scripture says that the fool says in his heart there's no God. He believes there's actually no God. But this is that's what you end up with. When you go down that road, you end up with the tree that makes no noise when it falls and Schrodinger's cat that doesn't live or die until somebody opens a box to see. See, none of that, th th those logical fallacies that those ideas are based on are all evaporated by the knowledge that God exists, that everyone has. God says everybody knows that. And, but he also says they deliberately suppress that knowledge with their very reasoning, like Schrodinger's cat and all these things. Are, and the theory of evolution is a suppression of the knowledge of God. Deliberate. Because of the evil of the human heart, the corruption of he, the human heart, the heart tells your mind what to think and what to make up excuses for. See, there's a motivation behind thoughts. A moral motivation. Which is why you cannot have education that's not built on the foundation of the knowledge of God. There has to have a foundation to build everything else on. Otherwise, it's like, that's only what you say. Two plus two equals four. That's only what you say. And we have that. Academics, professors saying you can't say that 2 plus 2 always equals 4. Why? Because there's no certainty in anything. It's all existential. It's all subject to the observer. It's only what you, you create in your own reality. There's nothing that exists outside of you. Isn't that absurd? See, if nothing exists, then those, those people that Mr. What's-His-Name shot don't really exist. They were, they were just in his mind. And they, the only reason they dead, they're, they're dead is because he saw them die. And if he hadn't seen them die... <sighs> See, here's the wrench in the whole works there. God exists. You have a universal observer and a universal actor. And everything that exists, exists because God created. It doesn't mean God created everything that happens, but God created everything in the beginning, including man. Now, if you're a Calvinist, you believe that God willed all those kids to die. That was God's ordained purpose from before creation. Yeah, I'm not a Calvinist, no. I got into it for a while until I found the real weak spot. Yeah, the eternal decree of absolutely everything. It's like, okay, you want to go there? Bye-bye. We've just parted ways. But, uh, yeah, once I saw that, I like, began to understand the implications. It's like, eh. So if you want to uh, to uh, argue with a Calvinist, just slam them with the eternal decree of absolutely everything and the morality of that. And they'll say, who are you to judge God? No, you, you no, this is your theology. Then you come back, this is your theology we're judging. And they'll say, well, the scripture says this. He said, well... The scripture says that, that uh, God didn't know what Abraham would do until Abraham did it, as far as his offering of Isaac. God said, now I know. 
that you fear me. So God learns according to the scriptures. I say, well, God doesn't learn. God can't learn. Well, then you don't believe the Bible. That's the problem. I believe the scripture. And when Calvinism began, I began to see that Calvinism did not follow the scripture, but it follows Aristotle, Augustine, and Aquinas. Aristotle threw them. Uh uh. I don't follow Aristotle. Aristotle didn't save me. But see, we, the, these, this philosophical stuff gets into society. And because of man's sinfulness and man's trying to suppress the knowledge of God, because the knowledge of God tells man that he's guilty of sin. The people don't like that. So they want to suppress that. They want to feel good about themselves. So they invent ways to get rid of God, like evolution, like uh, Schrodinger's cat, like the tree not making a sound when it falls. Because all that assumes that God does not exist. It necessarily assumes that. So if you have a system of education that does not begin with the foundation of God, God existing and God the creator, and that God has spoken, because that's a necessary question you must ask. If God exists, has he communicated with us? And the answer is yes. And the scripture says that God has furnished proof of who Jesus is, authenticated Jesus, his very son, through the resurrection of Jesus. And of course, uh, Thomas Paine would say, well, I didn't see him rise. Well, you didn't see him die either. You're not a witness. So if you want to throw out witness, so Thomas Paine's a fool. So you'd have to throw out every court trial. Because if the jury didn't see themselves with their own eyes the events, they can't judge. That's absurd. See, when, when your system of beliefs is contrary to reality, it just has to be done away with. But I was thinking about the, the space, the new James Webb Space Telescope. The Hubble had, it's like the space station. The space station, years ago, they started resorting to asking school children what experiments, you know, like grade school children, what experiments they should do. Because they didn't have any useful things to do anymore there. They had exhausted its purpose, but they had to keep it going. This applies to so much. It applies to government programs. It applies to churches and institutions. That once you create them, you can never get rid of them. They become, they develop, they, they have to perpetuate their own existence. One way or another. So the space station, that flying junk up there, has no purpose to be. It's got no rational reason anymore for its existence. It's outlived its, uh, any uh, scientific purpose. But, it, it can never die. No matter how many billions of dollars they'll throw into it, it can never die until God brings it down. Or actually, <laughs> entropy will bring it down. It's part of God's universe. Uh, the, this, the Hubble telescope had run out of useful missions. It had fulfilled its purpose, but they kept it going and kept it going and kept it going. Again, asking kids and stuff, what should we take a picture of? They wanted to keep their jobs. There was a lot of people employed. It's like the Rural Electrification Association, you know, the, the Congress congressional uh, thing that was created to electrify the countryside because it wasn't commercially viable to string all the wires out to the farms scattered out there back in the 40s or whenever they created that. Probably was under uh, Roosevelt. But it's, I think it's still around. And I think it still says a government subsidy. Uh, but uh, the James Webb, here, let's go to key facts here. So I wanted to look, look at this. I, you know, a question came up in my mind. So this is uh, 
uh, James Webb Space Telescope Goddard Flight, uh, Flight uh, Space Flight Center. This is official website. Webb, an orbiting infrared observatory, will complement and extend the discoveries of the Hubble Space Telescope with longer wavelength coverage and greater, greatly improved sensitivity. In other words, just bigger. Uh, they want to use infrared because infrared is, is a lower, longer frequency of light and it is not as scattered by the dust in space. Um, photographers, well, in the days of black and white, if you put a red filter on your camera, of course, the film generally tended to be more red sensitive anyway, anyway, because it would filter, the light is more scattered, the blue, the reason the sky looks blue is because the dust scatters blue, high frequency, more than low frequency, like red. So the sky is blue rather than red because uh, the dust scatters the blue light more than it does the red light. So uh, if you wanted to have uh, a long, say, a, a, a landscape and it was somewhat hazy, if you put a red filter on your camera or an orange or yellow filter on your camera, varying degrees of effect, the, it would be clearer and there'd be more contrast. It'd be like the, the contrast between the clouds and the sky with a red filter is dramatic because the sky appears like dark or black and the clouds white. Whereas with a blue filter, it, it minimizes the contrast. So that's why they want infrared, rather an extended uh, explanation there. But uh, <clears throat> the JWST or Webb Okay, so Webb, key facts, the James Webb Space Telescope, sometimes called the JWST or the Webb, or Webb, is an orbiting infrared observatory that will complement and extend the discoveries of the Hubble Space Telescope with longer wavelength coverage and greatly improved sensitivity. We just read that from above. So repetitious here. The longer wavelengths will enable the Webb to look uh, much closer to the beginning of time and to hunt for unobserved formation of the first galaxies, as well as look inside dust clouds where the stars and planetary systems were, are forming today, supposedly forming today, in their system of cosmology. Um, looking back closer to the beginning, Hmm. Uh, does that have to do something with the Hubble constant and the, uh, or the Doppler shift? Let me simplify it. Uh, but there, there's so much nonsense out there. So, okay, according to uh, the current estimates of the extent of the universe, uh, the universe is expanding at a rate of two and a half times the speed, of, or two times, two and a half times the speed of light. How so? How, how so? So, uh, wait a minute. Uh, how does that work? So space itself is expanding. How? 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 Does, somebody should ask these people some questions. If space is expanding, that means the very constants of the universe, like the speed of light, must be changing. And how do you know the, the, the constant the speed of light is actually constant. Now, there, there's so many obvious questions just to be asked of these people, but they won't answer them because that would ruin their jobs. So they bought into a system, and once you're in that system, you cannot buck the system or you'll destroy your job. You cannot ask questions like, for example, in America about human rights. What is the basis for human rights? It's just assumed. It's assumed that such a thing exists. We hold these truths to be self-evident. They're not self-evident. And that's one of the problems America has in this world, is that most, many cultures do not accept the idea of human rights. 
Because there's no basis for it. Other than God. And it's not that God gives us rights. It's we have responsibilities to obey him. And what he says is right and wrong. God has rights and wrongs. And you're expected to abide by what he says. And he is the universal observer and the universal creator. But, uh, so, they, they go into the details of this thing. So, the French launched this thing? So, NASA didn't have a, they had to use the Ariane 5. Ah, the European community. What a bunch of losers. Literally. Uh, so, it's going to be up there for 5 to 10 years. 62,000 pounds, or kilograms. 6,200 kilograms. So it's 20, 21 feet in diameter, uh, 25 square meters. Beryllium coated with gold. Okay, it's not made. Okay, that's. So the mass of the primary mirror is 705 kilograms. That's a little thin. What would happen if something larger than a micrometeorite struck it? Okay, so uh, I assume beryllium doesn't have a lot of thermal expansion. So focal length of uh, what is the F ratio on that? Oh, it's long. Ooh, what what is that? What kind of F ratio is that? One thirty one divided by uh, twenty five. Oh, it's F5. That's not too bad. <laughs> okay, so, it, but it's infrared. Uh, so what's the purpose, though? It, it, search for first galaxies, mission goals, formed uh, after the Big Bang. Determine how galaxies evolved uh, from their formation over time. So that they believe that by looking farther out, they're seeing farther back because it takes so many light years to get here. Of course, they can't actually measure the distance beyond nearby stars <clears throat> by trigonometry. So they measure it by light intensity and approximations. But if God created it and the light all at once, see, he created it to be seen. He didn't create it uh, 25 billion years ago or whatever the beginning date is now uh, and then wait for the light to get to earth he created the earth first and was it the second day or third day he created the sun and the stars and the moon so did God create the stars out there but they didn't appear until the light finally got here see they don't believe the bible if God exists, nothing the Bible says is a problem, including the order of creation. If God, in fact, uh, the Bible has God creating plants before creating the sun. So, you know, if it was thousands of years or millions of years, wouldn't that be a problem for photosynthesis? First thing it creates is light. Let there be light. Right, the stars come later. Which is interesting because the Big Bang is just a background radiation light that is apparently in the infrared. But all their all their their whole program here is based on their current cosmological assumptions. And science always tries to reinforce its already existing beliefs. And it's really difficult to discard it because it destroys the whole system. Uh, observe the formation of stars from the first changes to the... F you can't actually observe these things. See, they see something and they proclaim that these are new stars being formed. They don't know how old they really are. I know how old they really are, but the Bible tells me. But they can't know that. 
they are assuming all this based on their hypotheses, untestable hypotheses. And this is, this is created to gather a little more evidence to support their hypotheses. Uh, measure the physical and chemical properties of planetary systems, including our own solar system, and observe the potential for life in those systems. There's no potential for life. There's no for potential for physical life outside the Earth. There's no evidence of it. The complexity of the simplest organisms is, makes it impossible for it to occur by chance has to be made, created, just like the Bible tells us. And if you don't believe that, you're a fool, according to the Bible. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. I mean, if you can, if you believe in evolution, as I pointed out before, then you can sort a deck of cards by random selection. I suggest you compute that uh, before you attempt it. It's a pretty in, it's easy calculation. Huh. That if act couldn't occur in the, in the universe itself. They, they come, a deck of cards comes sorted because they're created that way. They're, they're pre-sorted. Man sorts it using wisdom, uh, intelligence. But without that, see, the, 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 these people have no wisdom because they have no fear of God. They, they, they can see facts, but they arrange it in such a way to suppress the knowledge of the truth. This is a $10 billion waste of money. Like the whole moon flight thing. You know, putting people up in space is an utter, that should be a criminal act. Because it's dangerous. How come OSHA doesn't apply to NASA? How many American sci uh, astronauts have died out of arrogance, the arrogance of man? The shuttle program. It was utterly stupid. Because you, why would you build a spaceship and all the necessary stuff to support human beings when you're just trying to get something up there? That's insane. Contrary to basic physics, it takes a certain amount of energy to lift something into orbit. And the more junk you fly along with it, is the less efficient that is. It's foolishness. And it's an endangering human life. In ocean research, nobody uses deep submersibles anymore. When I was young, back in the early 60s, uh, I don't know if it was 60, like 63 or 61, something like that, the, uh, the, the United States Navy took the bathyscaphe Trieste, which was a French uh, creation that they had bought, to the deepest spot in the ocean, the bottom of the Marianas Trench. They would never do that today. They would never risk human beings in such a, you know, other than for national pride, to say, well, we were the first ones, you know, like the first ones to land on the moon. How many Apollo astronauts died getting there? And how many, another three almost died? If it wasn't for the prayers of people around the world, they probably would have died. Who inspired them with the ideas how to survive once they had their little accident? Equipment failure. See, that's why you don't people put people, human beings, up in space. But, of course, this is a society that kills millions of human beings every year, deliberately. Murders them by many ways. But if there is no God, human life has no value. Human rights can't exist. Human value cannot exist. 
right and wrong cannot exist except as arbitrary social constructs. There's ten billions of, of dollars to employ a bunch of uh, scientists in an effort to prove that God does not exist, to prove their cosmology, which includes evolution. See, life does not occur in other places because God did not create them for life, and God did not put life there. Again, verifying the truth of Scripture from Romans chapter 1, that man seeks to suppress the knowledge of God that everyone has. Because they don't like God, because God says there's rights and wrongs, and you've done wrong. And there will be a judgment. They hate that. They, seem to, they try to suppress it. Science has become, rather than once what it once was, was glorifying God by revealing the wonder of his creation, has become an effort, a government-funded, government-supported effort, and not just in the United States. This is a, a human problem. To suppress the knowledge of God by creating other gods, including the God of science. Creating something other than the God who will judge us. Now, if you decide that that's not a good idea, and perhaps you should, God does exist, and you should be reconciled with him because you know you're wrong, you've done wrong, you know you've violated his commandments, I've got good news for you. God has a provision for you called Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on a cross, paying the penalty for your sins. Some people out there that call themselves Christians don't believe that, but they're fools, too. They don't believe the Bible. People like Dr. Wright, which is really Dr. Rock, doesn't believe that Christ died taking your place, taking your sins upon himself. But that's what the Scripture teaches. If you want to reject it, fine. But then you've rejected God's provision for your salvation. See, God did that, that he might reconcile you to himself. God's purpose is to save sinners. But if sinners refuse, God's not going to force you. He calls. Will you listen? Will you answer? All you have to do is call upon him to be saved from your sin that, that Christ's atonement would apply to you and that God would give you the promises of the new covenant that Christ paid for, that bought on the cross. Give you a new heart, a new spirit, to give you eternal life, to, and to, for, to give you a relationship with God so that you will personally know God. That's why Jesus said you must be born again. You must be born from above. You must be born of the Spirit. That's what that's all about, the new covenant. It's what he came to bring. It's what he accomplished on the cross and on Pentecost, which was last Sunday. That, that is a day, remember, the, the coming of the fulfillment of that, one of the promises of that, of the Holy Spirit being given to God's people permanently. Not with us, but in us. He will abide within you forever changing our relationship dramatically with God and restoring us, even in this life, much to the relationship God intended in creation. And that will be perfected when Christ returns, which will happen soon. Because if it doesn't, the fools on this planet are going to destroy the whole place. They've become perilously close to that in the last months. You don't put geriatric, senile geriatrics in the White House and give them the football. Uh -uh. The nuclear football, as it's called. You, you can't have godless people 
non-rational people. To be godless is to be non-rational. Corrupt people. You don't give them the keys to the gun cabinet. Or to the car. You take their keys away. But this whole country's nuts. This whole world's gone nuts. Because it is the last days. This is all evidence of what Jesus said. When you see all these things taking place. You know, the persecution of Christians. Christians in this country are routinely persecuted in various ways because we believe the Bible and hold to what God has said about what's right and wrong and about the necessity of salvation and about the coming judgment. The world doesn't want to hear it. So when, what does the world do when people are saying things they don't want to hear? It seeks to silence them. Like on YouTube. Like uh, on uh, Facebook. Like on Twitter. You silence the voices that, you make un that make you uncomfortable. Like during the pandemic. Silencing anything that wasn't the, the comforting line coming out from the authorities. See, to, to surrender yourself to others has a certain comfort to it. You are no longer responsible for your own life. But that doesn't work with God. He will hold you accountable regardless of your lying to yourself. It's like the, the young woman running for Congress that, contrary to the mudslinging of the others, saying, well, I, I, I will rebuild the middle class. That's a comfort, a comforting promise, but it's a lie. And she must know, unless she's totally delusional, that she can't do that. She doesn't have the power, nor does Congress have the power. Nor can, it's just like trying to legislate the weather. I'm sure they'll try that pretty soon, the way they're going can't do it. You can't create reality by passing a bill. It's beyond the power. See, that's a deification of government. Just like the deification of science and the deification of education and the deification of, of uh, finance and uh, uh, capitalism and all kinds of other things. It's making gods for yourself and putting your trust and hope in these things rather than the God who reveals himself to you constantly. Because you would would rather have a piece of stone, a dumb idol that you could keep on your shelf and pretend that's God than to face the reality of the real God that's there. Well, until you come to the face the reality that God is, and he has spoken, and he will hold you to account. As long as you abide in your self-delusion, you've got no hope. You will continue your downgrade, your descent into hell. This country, as the scripture says, every nation that forgets God will be turned aside to destruction. where America is today destroying itself Western Europe destroying itself these foolish sanctions it's, it's ju God's judgment God removing all wisdom from the leaders in the West they're fools much more so than many because they've had extensive exposure to the knowledge of God not only in creation but in the scriptures knowledge of Jesus Christ and they rejected it and now they have the consequences they have chosen to follow their own devices their own self-made gods and they're reaping the fruit so if you wonder why gasoline is headed toward eight dollars a gallon well America is turned away from God has no wisdom the fool has said in his heart there is no 